Close that down for Houston. We will take a quick break and the action will keep on coming. Another hot race coming up after the break. seventh running of the Penn Relays. And we go from one exciting event to another. The men's four by miles college championship of America. Today's action is presented by Toyota. Live on flow track all day. I'm Trevor Fulkerson joined by Hayden Cox. And boy, we have not just caught our breath and it is going to continue on here. We have potential even for a world record as we've seen over the years at Penn Relays, but this should be a special one in the men's four by mile. So Trevor, we have never seen a collegiate team break 16 minutes in the four by mile. Three teams have done it in history, Ireland, Duck Track Club, New Zealand, but the fastest collegiate time of all time was University of Oregon, Centrowitz weeding B1 and Rupp in 2009. But if there is a chance to go under 16, we have had several teams with the results to have it in the past, but just haven't put it together at the moment with four different guys going sub four. That magical four minute mile gets a little bit more magical when you have four guys trying to break four. We have the firepower on the track to make it happen, but this is an event that is about racing. We've seen it time and time again, what a historic event here where guys have slammed the brakes, waited for other guys, racing rather than pacing. I would love to see somebody go out here and hammer to get under that 16-minute barrier. And if there is a time to do it, it is today at Franklin Field at the 127th running of Penn Relays. It doesn't get much better than that. Washington will line up in one. They're the favorite. Oklahoma State is going to be with them as well. Virginia, Georgetown, Wisconsin, Villanova. Duke, Iona, Notre Dame, Indiana, Penn State scheduled to go. We'll see if they are there. Michigan, Michigan State, UConn, and Georgia Tech. And the national collegiate record, as you said, the fastest collegiate time of all time, 16.03 back in 09. Listen to this team. Matthew Centeritz. He turned out all right. Andrew Weeding, not too bad. Shadrach, Biwat, and Galen Rupp. So a pretty stacked team for those Ducks, but still running still a little couldn't bit go under, 16. under their potential, if you will. If you will, the uh, Penn Relays record belongs to Michigan, 16:04:54 back in 05. A pretty good lineup there as well. Andrew Ellerton, Mike Woods, Nick Willis, Nate Granite. I'd have to probably use both hands to count up Olympic medals between all those guys on those two teams. So this is such a launching point. You're probably watching a couple of uh, future studs here as well, They're current studs. But this is going to be a great battle. It doesn't always match up the way you add it up on paper, but with four legs, four full miles, if anybody pushes the pace, this record should be absolutely gone. We have said that before, but Washington on paper comes in as the favorite. There are 15 teams on the track. As you said, though, a lot of people have been hyping this up as Washington burst the field. Washington is that first bid. They'll be joined by Oklahoma State, Virginia, Georgetown, Wisconsin, Villanova, Duke, Iona, Notre Dame, Indiana, Penn State, Michigan, Michigan State, UConn, and Georgia Tech. If you want to just a highlight reel of top distance programs year after year after year, look at this start list. There is firepower from top to bottom, but Washington, the team to watch, they have had so many guys go sub four in the mile this year. It, it feels like they could be an, an entirely all-American team in a former year, but Washington has the firepower to go sub-16. Luke Hauser scheduled to be their first leg indoor national mile champion, ran 339 at Brian Clay. All we need from this race, though, I'll tell you, any one of these teams could go sub-16, but we have to keep 
the pace moving. So we will be keeping an eye on the splits throughout the race to see if we can't get that magical 16-minute barrier. Look at the W there of the Huskies running in the middle of the pack right now. We saw Oklahoma State on the women's side, always well represented on the men's side as well. And I'm on record. I said it maybe on day one sometime back then. I'm taking the field. Nothing against Washington. Incredible, incredible squad. But I just feel like there's something in the air that maybe uh, – Somebody else is going to topple the Giant. It, it kind of reminds me of the Galen Rupp record attempt all the way back when at Stanford when Chris Zielinski ended up taking the American record, being the first American under 27 minutes in that 10K. I, I don't know. I get that feeling. Washington hyped up eight guys sub four indoors, the whole thing, and they can certainly do it, but they would have to put the pedal to the metal. I just feel like some of those other teams, if they let them hang around, could potentially pit them at the line for a victory. Now, maybe it'll be quick, maybe it won't. We've seen it go both ways over the years. Of course, some infamous four-by-miles here at Penn Relays in the past when it has slowed down. They're running a pretty honest pace for now. Honest pace right now, I can tell you every single one of these guys in this field has heard the hype around Washington and they've looked in the mirror and said, what about me? This is their opportunity to showcase themselves and their team here, but the sub-16 barrier is so hard. We saw it last year with Flanagan, Elmer, Klecker, and Hoar get ready to run that sub-16 attempt for on athletics, came up short with 16.04. I mean, that is just world-class talent that couldn't make it happen. But all these collegiates have a little bit extra on their shoulder today. The collegiate atmosphere, so fun to watch. But here we go, getting into the final lap of the first leg. Listen to this world record team. Ireland holds that world record. Eamon Coughlin, Marcus O'Sullivan, Frank O'Mara, and Ray Flynn. Set back in 1985. Same thing, Olympians there, world champions. And folks that are just absolutely incredible. Eamon Coughlin, of course, the chairman of the boards, the indoor mile runner, so often the champion there. But that's the, who these guys are chasing. That, of course, is the world record, the collegiate record, like we said, belongs to the University of Oregon, 16.03. We'd love to see a sub-16 minute here. And uh, with that map, of course, that would be an average of sub-4 minutes per leg. Wisconsin has started to move on the outside. Villanova with them, along with Georgetown and Oklahoma State. Four that first wide. leg is going to be right at four flat. We still have some work to do, but look, Gary Martin with the baton for Virginia. Let's see if we can keep this pace rolling. A number of these guys will have multiple races in their legs already, but like you said, there's just a little something extra in the air today. You can kind of see it's a drizzle. It's not a downpour like it was yesterday, but... These guys are running for more than just themselves, more than just the team. It's the school on their chest and running for history. Gary Martin looking comfortable now. Villanova out in front. Wisconsin, Washington further back in the pack. Of course, everybody's still in striking distance. But somebody is going to have to push it. Villanova starting to push it now. They this have won is this good. event 20 times, tied for Arkansas with the most victories ever here at Penn. This is what we need here. We love racing here at Penn Relays, but we also want to see the fast times. Villanova was the first to hand off 401, 24. Not quite what we would hope from the first leg, but the record is still in possibility. Villanova keeping the ball rolling here. Oklahoma State right behind them. Well, here's the catch 22. Hey, tell me your thoughts as a distance guy. If you have someone with you, you get to race. You might run a little quicker, although that might get pushed to the last lap or two. If you have somebody, if you're if you're running by yourself, it can be tough, right? That's true of just about any event. If you're running by yourself, you're not necessarily getting pushed, maybe not getting everything out of it. So the question is, do you push it now and get a big lead and run all alone and then maybe not run as fast as you could, or do you wait and end up racing, but then you you know, potentially have someone that could hockey down. That's always the question. I think on the women's side, you're much more likely to see athletes push the pace, really go after it, and put other teams behind them. The men, they all think they can run the fastest last 200 meters, though we saw it with Ed Cheserick in that famous race where Villanova came out on top. All these guys think they can kick. It's kind of the danger of the mile, the hubris, if you will. But I'd like to see these guys keep going. They know what's on the line here. But the other problem is, is they know every other guy in this race can also go under four minutes on the right day. So it's really hard to want to slam the hammer down when you know that the guy behind you is profiting off your work. Guys, a lot less cooperative. Certainly you can get the best out of yourselves in that last 200 meters if you're racing, but harder to really dig for four minutes straight up front. We kind of have four races in one, and of course that's always true in a relay on each leg, but 
especially so here on the longer distance stuff. We mentioned it on the women's side, but for the men, it's not just a chance to carry that two-tone baton here at Franklin Field. It's a chance to show your squad is one of the dominant distance programs in the nation. We have cross country, we have indoor track, we have outdoor track championships, conference nationals. But there's just something a little special about pen relays and the rare chance to show off if you have four absolute monsters on your distance squad. Look at Villanova being pressed now by Oklahoma State and the running is gonna start picking up here. They need to start hammering. Villanova starting to fade a little bit. Ryan Chop into the lead for Oklahoma State. We saw him make the mistake of slowing things down in the DMR. He is not going to make that mistake again. He is going to the front, starting to hammer Washington and Gary Martin of Virginia right behind him. 300 meters to go in this leg. Always a funny event, the four by mile. They don't hand off at the start finish line. It's nine extra meters for the mile. So it would just get a little bit closer and a little bit closer to that start finish line with each exchange. We'll see what they come through here through their second leg. Gary Martin of Virginia making a move. Georgetown there in fourth as well. They broke their school record in the DMR just the other day. Gary Martin of Virginia. UW has gotten back in the mix here, but Gary Martin doing it for the Cavaliers right now. A really great leg from Gary Martin, and they will hand off in the lead just at the eight minute mark. We will see what the official split was there. Eight flat point three one. Sub 16 is still in the card. It will all come down to that anchor leg, but I can guarantee you every one of these teams has two guys that on the right day can break four here, so let's see what happens. It takes some chutzpah to uh, take that stick in front and start to push the pace. It feels like these guys just aren't used to running that first lap by themselves because why would you be? Everybody starts at the same moment in a normal flat 1,600 meter, a mile, whatever it is, 1,500. So they're used to having a lot of people with them and then deciding when to make a move. It's kind of a different feel to get the stick in your hand 5, 10 meters ahead and continue to push that pace. So I think that's one of the things psychologically that comes into it. So it really does take a little bit of veteran gamesmanship and strategy to not back off the gas too early. Yeah, we'll see what they come through here at about 400 meters. 87, 88, 58, 59, 9 flat on the dot, about a 60-second first lap. Virginia continues to lead, followed by Georgetown, followed by Washington, followed by Villanova, Oklahoma State, and several other teams still in the mix. It is Nathan Mountain doing the work right now for Virginia up front, the native of Cincinnati, Ohio. He is no stranger to hard work, and he is going straight to the front of this pack to keep it rolling. I'd like to see somebody help him out here, though. The sense is in this second lap, I think he's going to lose a second or two off this four-minute mile pace. Somebody else needs to come around him. He has been doing so much great work here for about 600 meters. I want to see somebody else give him some help, get somebody under this 16-minute barrier. But of course, all these teams, they want to bring the wheel home for themselves. Trevor and I, we don't care who wins. We just want to see a sub-16, right? Absolutely. So a little bit of a different uh, incentive structure up here as we really want that sub-16, and they want the wheel. But it continues to be mountain leading for Virginia. Other teams have gotten back in this mix, though. Michigan has latched on. So has Iona. They are all getting back into play here. UConn finding their way. And we are... We are, as expected, losing a second or two off that four-minute pace. These guys can bring it back in the last lap, but they need to start moving. I hate seeing this bunching up. It means they're slowing down. Somebody needs to go to the front and attack if we're going to see a sub-16. And that's all it takes is one person to put, slightly push on that gas pedal, and then the responses will cascade, and the athletes will continue to press the well, pace. I'll tell you, I think it's on Washington's shoulders right now. They have the PRs on paper. That's who I want to see go to the front and start pushing the pace here. They've got four guys so far under four, it is ridiculous. Luke Hauser, the NCAA indoor champion, 352. Sam Ellis, 353. Nathan Green, 352. And Joe Wascom, the champion in the 1500 outdoors, 351. On paper, listen to this, a 1530. You're telling me we're not going to get a sub-16 with a 1530 team on the track? 1105, 1106 is what they're going to come through in that leg. And finally, Washington going to the front and starting to push the pace. Yeah, 30 seconds worth of wiggle room between four legs. You'd think that we'd be able to uh, see something. But, it, you know, that's what makes it so special. It's not just about adding up the relay or the individual times 
for a relay. We've seen that in the 400 meters. Of course, the 4x1 is much more on the razor's edge, but that's what makes it so frustrating when they slow down here and aren't able to mix it up or, or push that pace. But these guys now starting to press on that gas pedal. And this will be a hot final couple hundred meters. Look at Villanova and Virginia, as they did on the previous leg. Washington hanging on. It just makes no sense to me. Why do you wait this long? You've got a much better PR. Washington's going to get caught in the weeds here, fading to fourth or fifth, and they'll hand off. He's feeling good. He might find a window here to break through, but five teams still very much in this race. And the way we've seen this run before, Wisconsin two or three meters behind. They are not out. 12.03, 12.04, 12.03 mid is going to be the split. We're going to need to see a 4.56, and look at these guys. It's not going to happen. Yeah, 3.56 would be oh, within they are the jogging. capabilities of a lot of these guys, but we've seen this so many times. Oh, they, they are the jogging up front. Cruise. I hate to see it. UVA stuck at front. They are jogging, and you can tell because look at how quickly Michigan is getting back on. You're going to see every team get back on here. Duke getting back on. Oh, there it goes. And you can hear the groans from the crowd. That's that. We just, that's it. No more sub-16. They decided to jog. Duke thinking about going to the lead. I like to see that, but oh, man. You Come on, send, guys. You can send flowers and cards of condolences to Gordon Mack, care of Flow Track. He's been hyping it up on paper. Potential for it. And the hard thing, too, is we only see this race maybe once a year at the I, Penn Relays. We very rarely see at least a high-quality four by mile. I mean, you can see the pace. Watch how quickly this Iona guy gets on the back of this pack. He was maybe 20 meters behind at the handoff, but this is a tempo run for a guy. I mean, their 10th, 12th guy, the JV freshman on their team can run this pace right now. They are letting everybody else back in the group. There was some, there was some uh, separation with that front group, but now every other team is getting back in this. Even Notre Dame, who has lost so much pace, they're gonna get back in this race. I mean. Trevor, I don't run too much anymore. I could be going with this pace right now. They are jogging yeah. right now. These guys are all sub four minute miles. Every single team in this group could be going sub 16. We could throw some high school boys out there. They'd be looking just fine in this pack. Man, it just makes you wonder if they should save the airfare, you know. As fans, we just want to see something quick here. We want to see these guys race, especially because we know that they could race at this pace, of course. This is going to be a great finish, don't get me wrong. But they could race at four flat pace each leg as well. well. Well, listen to this stat. Notre Dame was 13 seconds behind at the handoff. Look who's at the back of the pack looking smooth. Notre Dame. This is easy. They are all jogging right now. I'll tell you this. One of these teams, one of these teams is going to have that last 200. They're going to take the wheel, and they're going to go home happy. Everybody else is going to feel like a fool. They had the opportunity. They are letting it slip through their grasp. This is like watching Matt Centrowitz win the Olympic gold medal where all these guys with faster PBs and Centro looked the smartest guy on the track while he won in one of the slowest 1500 meter times in history at the Olympics. But do we have a Matt Centro in this race? Can somebody close the door in the last 150 meters? But every single one of these guys thinks they can do it. Well, I hate to uh, call back already, but I did pick the field against Washington, so we'll see. If their kick is stronger, which is what it's going to come down to, not which four legs are the strongest. So the 1,600, the four by mile, 1,609 rather, by four, is going to come down to the final laps as it has so many times well, before. Texas won last year, Wisconsin before that, Villanova in 2018. Here's the bell. Well, Duke is leading right now. They were out of this race handing off to the third exchange zone, but because of the slow, lazy running up front, they are now back in the race up front, and anything can happen. Duke should have been out the back after leg two, but they are now mixing up Iona, another team. They were nowhere near the lead when they hung out to that third, that third exchange zone, but now they are in the mix. Oklahoma State starting to move. They are starting to wind it up. The fans are getting going. Here we go. The battle for the wheel is on. Oklahoma State there with a great leg for Wood Musaudi going three wide. Look Watch at Wisconsin. Watch Wisconsin in a great position there in fourth. Wisconsin going to the outside. Does he have another gear? Oh, there's George a move. Who is that? Villanova. Four Big wide. running kicker races here. Washington. Before. Villanova. Villanova. Villanova's going to take the win. They've won on a kick so many times here. They do it again. Villanova goes 
home with the wheel. Everybody else should be shaking their head in dismay right now. What were you doing? Villanova takes control, takes the kick, and will take home the wheel. 16-14, but the time inconsequential. This is the first time Villanova's won since 2018, and guess what, it breaks the tie. They now have 21 victories in this event, one more than Arkansas, who was not in this race, but Villanova, gosh, talk about an incredible, incredible distance program over the years. We mentioned the Irish team that holds the world record. A number of those athletes ran at Villanova, and an incredible race. Villanova able to take the victory. Look at less than a second separating multiple teams here, all the way down 16-14 and change, all the way down to sixth place. Well, did we just see a rerun of 2015 when Ed Cheserit slammed the brakes, let so many other teams back in the race. It was Villanova who closed it out and took the win, and Villanova does it again, profiting off the slow running by the other teams and closing the door on everybody in the last Villanova, hey, said, hey, you're gonna give us a chance. We're ready to go. There are no slouches, of course, on paper, but when it comes time to race, Villanova knows how to get it done. Wisconsin ends up second. Washington in third, the pre-race favorites. But Liv is downstairs now with our winners from Villanova. Congratulations, Villanova. Talk to me about this race, because there were a lot of things in conversation going into this race. Sub-16, collegiate record on the line. What was just kind of the thought process going into today's race? Uh, I think we wanted to run our own race. Our coach gave us some good advice beforehand. He said just stay relaxed. Uh, it's going to be physical out there. Just run the race you're comfortable running, and the rest will play itself out. The guys got... They all ran right each leg, and it gave me the baton, the perfect spot I wanted to, and I tried to stay relaxed, and I trust everything they did to get me to that spot, so I think if I just stayed relaxed and listened to what they said and my coaches said, it all worked out. Talk to me about that final lap, because everybody else was still in striking distance, but you made that move coming off that last turn. Why did you decide to make that move then? Uh, I feel like yesterday, I went a little too early. Uh, I was forced to make a move because the guys on the outside were coming around me, and I paid for it with the last 100 meters. Um, so I definitely wanted to wait today, and I felt like I was in a good spot for them. The people in front of me to move first, and I just trusted what my coach was telling me. He said, if you wait to, wait to make that move, it'll all play out. So I trusted what he said, and I figured if I had a little bit left, I'd be able to go for it. Well, congratulations on making the right move at the right time. Congratulations to your team. Gentlemen, back to you. Villanova, the victors, now the most victorious team in the four by mile. That was their 21st victory. You saw the early exchanges. It seemed like Washington was gonna go after it. They were gonna get broken up, but Villanova did the hard work. They made the move when it counts. That is their 21st victory here at the Penn Relays in the four by mile to become the winningest team in history.